Hi guys, Miss Kay again. I have an assignment for you. You have been doing all these shoe drawings and so now I'm going to tell you about taking those multiple little shoe drawings you have and turning them into a bigger assignment. Um, it's pretty easy, but uh, let me show you what I've got. Okay, so in the last week you have done shoe drawings, lots and lots of them. I have here a student example sketchbook. I kept this from last trimester. It was really good work. The only thing I don't like about this sketchbook is how small it is. I totally wish it were a full notebook size. But anyway, uh, the student did some really good work and has some really great drawings. So I want to show you what they did for their shoe drawings. So for your shoe drawings, you should have a set of them. The very first drawing, shoe drawing we did, was a contour drawing. That's just simple outlines, nothing more just outlines, contour drawing. Then we did a blind contour drawing, and the student used the same shoe for all of theirs. Um, blind drawing, okay? Um, <laughs> a little scribbly, kind of fun. Hopefully you had some fun with it. And then lastly, you did a shoe drawing with full shading. So it's a lot like the contour drawing, it's just more finished. So, um, full shading, full detail. Contour drawing, just the outlines. Um, taking all that value practice and applying it to your shoe gets you this uh, more detailed drawing. Anyway, okay, so you have these three different shoe drawings. And so for the final project, you are going to choose the one of these that you like best, the style of drawing that you liked best. You know, maybe you really, really think that the contour drawing is the way to go. It's your favorite thing. You like the nice crisp lines and you, you love it. Or maybe you really do prefer uh, something with full shading and value. It makes you feel like it's more realistic and you just really prefer it. Totally fine. Up to you. Or maybe you did really like the blind drawing. If you really like the blind drawing, great. Fine. You pick. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to keep those three shoe drawings together. And actually, you want to make sure they don't get lost. Keep them in your sketchbook and make sure they're all labeled. Okay. Oops, sorry. There you go. Make sure they're labeled and put the date on them as well. The student didn't do that, but keep them all together. Now, in this packet, I gave you a pink packet, and it uh, is titled, What is Contour Line? Uh, we're modifying all of our assignments, so keep that in mind. This is a packet that was built for a regular trimester. Um, but there's a lot of information here. It's interesting to read through. I don't need you to take notes on it. We kind of talked about some of these things briefly. Here's what I want you to look at. This is the assignment page, and on this page it says, right up at the top, that the shoe drawing total worth 40 points, and that is the score I'm going to keep on this project because it's a bigger drawing, it's a bigger piece of artwork. Okay, uh, it says you're doing a total of five shoe drawings, but you did three. Okay, so there's one thing we're going to change: three shoe drawings. Actually, if you want to think about this final one, that gives us four. So really, we're doing a total of four shoe drawings. If you want to make these changes, you may. To a line, here we go, I'll make that change. This was drawing number one. So again, if you want to make these changes, you can. If that's going to help you keep this organized, you can flip flop. Okay, so we had a contour line drawing for our very first, then we did a blind contour drawing for our second, and I did tell you, if you read all the instructions on there, you had a choice to do it in pen or pencil for the blind drawing. And then third, third stays the same. Drawing number three was draw all the detail of your shoe shading needed. So that was a full uh, full shoe drawing with shading and value. Okay. So drawings one, two, and three. We are crossing off drawings number four and five. We're just not gonna worry about those. But what we are going to do for our fourth drawing is to take the drawing that you liked best, the style of drawing that you liked best, whether that's blind, whether that's contour, or whether that's full realistic shading with value, and you're going to draw it large. Now in the stack of papers that I gave you in your art kit, we had a whole bunch of different kind of paper. Okay, we've origami paper, painting paper, the biggest paper we have, that's the one you want, okay? So, for this assignment, I expect you to take one really big piece of paper. It's the biggest! Okay, one. And you're going to do a large shoe drawing, okay? So now, uh, for example, if I were going to use this shoe again, I mean, I've practiced it a whole bunch of times, I'm really good at it by now, it should be easier to do the same shoe that I've been doing, but... Again, up to you. I don't care so much if the shoes match in your drawings. What I care about is that you've picked a favorite style. And then what you produce on your big sheet of paper is done in that favorite style of yours, okay? 
Now, if you have a boot, maybe you want your paper to be tall like this with the sole of the shoe down at the bottom and then it gets tall, that's fine. Or maybe you want to lay it down like this. Uh, mine would probably be down like this if I had the shoe here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the students finished artwork, but I do have their little drawing. So anyway, uh, it's going to be big. Now, if you are drawing, say this sneaker or this running shoe on this large piece of paper, it's going to be a big one. The tip of the shoe, the toe of the shoe is going to be somewhere over in this range. The heel of the shoe is going to be somewhere over here. The top of the shoe, the tongue and the laces, will be something kind of like this. There's the laces for this shoe. And then the bottom of this shoe is rounded and kind of curved and it goes like that, okay? So to briefly and quickly lay out the general size of the shoe, oh, I'm realizing it's very hard for you to see now. I did this lightly so I'm not wrecking the paper and so that I can erase it later. There's the toe of the shoe. There's the heel of the shoe. Bottom curve laces. Okay, so if I draw a shoe that size, I use up most of the paper. Okay, you see how I can make the shoe double the size that I drew up my first time or I don't know, triple even. Okay, the idea is that you have a big piece of paper and you're going to do a big shoe drawing. Okay, now drawing large is a challenge. It is not easy to do. Um, but you can do it. You have to focus and you have to really be deliberate about where you place your lines. You can't just jump in and start drawing right away. What I would recommend is that you sit down with your shoe. Again, this is observational drawing, so you need to have your shoe in front of you when you draw. But then do something like this. Take the piece of paper and lay it out. Be general about it. Just give yourself some really light marks on the paper and, be, and say something like, yep, the toe of my shoe is going to be all the way over here. The heel of my shoe is going to be over here the laces, the bottom, and then once you have that framework in place, then you can draw on top of it and make everything stretch and fit this large size. Drawing large is a challenge. It's okay if you get something on paper and then you realize it was too small. That's okay. Erase and make it bigger. Okay. Making adjustments is part of the process. Everybody needs to make adjustments. Everybody needs to be okay with erasing it's fine. That's how we grow. That's how we get better. Okay. You have to get something on the paper. And then as you make adjustments and as you put in more time and effort and adjustments and adjustments and more adjustments, erasing and fixing what you have, this will become the shoe you want it to be. It will become bigger and better. Okay. So now, for example, if I had a boot of mine, the boot that I was drawing for my examples, here it is. This is a snow boot of mine. Okay, uh, It's very tall. It's very fluffy up on top. Uh, this is the one that I did for my, um, my blind drawing, if you remember seeing that in the examples. Uh, you can take the time to kind of pose this how you want. So if I were going to draw this boot, I would probably take the time to tie a knot in it or even lace it up all the way. Um, up to you. Totally up to you. You have a lot of choice with this. So make sure that it's something that you can see. So if I were going to draw it, and I were going to draw it so you could see what I were drawing, I would pose it, set it up like that. I might turn it toward me a little bit so it was a little more interesting. Or maybe, again, I could get a second boot. I could draw a pair of boots. Okay, the idea here is that you choose the style you like best and you draw it big. Okay, you draw it big so it fills the space. If I were going to draw this boot, again, just to do a general layout, I would give myself I'm doing this a little bit darker so it's easier for you to see on the camera. I would do something like this in this space. I have the fur of the boot. Okay, so I know I need to make the fur about this big. Then let's see, the boot drops down, it's rounded, the heel of the boot is here. Then it's curved at the bottom. Oh, and you know what? I've run out of paper. So maybe I do need to make this a little bit smaller. Okay, if you run out of paper, that's not good. So what if I say my boot's about that tall and the heel of my boot is there? If the heel of my boot is there, that means... There we go. Now I have enough space to fit the toe of my boot on the page. Okay, and this is why we take the time to do a general layout before we start drawing, before we start uh, delving in really deeply, and before we start... Um, pressing hard with our pencil and making lines that are harder to erase. OK, 
okay? So it's okay if this thing doesn't fill the entire page, but it needs to fill over half the page, absolutely. If you haven't even filled up half of this page with your drawing, then you're not using the space appropriately, you're not using the space well, and you're not taking on the challenge of drawing large like I'm asking you to. So, again, here's about where my boot will lay out. Not perfect, but you know what? It's a start, and it tells me uh, how to generally start laying things out on here so that I use the space well. Okay, so I'm going to be done talking for now. That was a lot of instructions. I want you to get started. I'm going to draw my boot, uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll put it on the end of this video for you so you can see my finished version too. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Bye. Hey guys, me again. I just realized, of course, after I cut off the recording, uh, you do need to... Uh, dedicate some time to your drawing if you're going to do the blind contour drawing. If you really love the blind contour and that's what you choose to do, great. But um, this could wind up being a quick scribble if we're not careful. And uh, in order to make sure that you dedicate the proper amount of time to your blind contour drawing, if you are choosing to do a blind contour drawing, then I'm going to set a parameter for you that you must draw for a full uh, six minutes. Okay, so that's putting six minutes on the clock, pressing the go button, and then you draw for that entire six minutes. Now, if you use the whole six minutes and you don't feel like you're done yet, then continue. I want you to draw a blind contour drawing until you feel like your shoe is done. If you're not sure if you're done, uh, then you can peek at your drawing, but it's not meant to be a... Um, stare at your paper sort of drawing. It could be like take a quick peek and then move along. Um, if you uh, if you use the full six minutes and you look at your drawing and you're, uh, you feel like it's complete, then you're done. Great. Then you can move on and be finished. Um, but if you are not choosing to do a blind contour drawing, then you have to put in the time and the effort to make this a really, really good drawing. Okay, now a blind contour drawing can be a really, really good drawing as well, uh, but it's just a different style. And if that's the style you liked best, and that's the style of drawing you're happiest with, because I want you to be happy with the artwork that you're creating, um, then you do have to dedicate the proper time to it. Okay. Now, for a large drawing like this, if you're going to do more of a realistic drawing, contour drawing, or the drawing with all the shading and everything, this could easily take you a full hour. Okay. Um, and that is just the way it is, okay? So dedicating more time to something, dedicating more time to your drawing will allow you to fully finish it and make it look more realistic. So if that's the route you're choosing, it'll take you probably about an hour. And if you're going the blind contour drawing route, great. Hopefully you're happy with something that looks scribbly and maybe a little off. Um, in that case, it needs to be a full, uninterrupted six minutes of drawing. And if you're going that route, you have to make sure you use the shield. Remember, this is the shield that I used. Poke my pencil through it, and then I hold on the bottom. That way, as I draw, this blocks my face from seeing what's on my paper. That's how we get the blind contour aspect. Okay, sorry, I forgot about that clarification, but I think it was important information. So, all right, bye.